I'm here to talk to you a little bit more about this fragrance, White Diamonds by Elizabeth Taylor. I figure if you clicked on this video, you're at least slightly interested in this. I just did the video on her younger two sisters, you know, from 1999 and 2001, Brilliant White Diamonds and Sparkling White Diamonds, the white and bluish one. Yeah, so I feel like I kind of disrespected this one by not speaking about her in detail. So I want to talk to you about White Diamonds, 1991 release of a fragrance by Elizabeth Taylor. Like when you think about Elizabeth Taylor, you think White Diamonds. This is infamous in the fragrance community. I forgot to mention the perfumer. This fragrance is by Carlos Benet. For me, like everyone has something they might be sensitive to in smells. And for me, that's aldehydes. I don't know how many other people are like this, but for the longest time in my life, I thought I disliked perfume, like for the longest time in my life. And I'm the only fraghead that I know that has that as the case. When I smell white diamonds with these aldehydes, like really I'm sensitive to all aldehydes, even current like modern ones, but these are going to be like older fashioned aldehydes. The color of this is just like the texture and the smell of this. It's kind of like, like a varnish, the darkish, like the caramel colored varnish, and it coats the florals. It coats the other notes. And aldehydes are listed as, you know, the top note, one of the top notes. So I'll read you the rest of the notes for, for uh, this fragrance. Lily of the Valley, Neroli, Orange and Bergamot. Then the mid. Egyptian tuberose, jasmine, ylang, narcissus, carnation, Italian orris root, Turkish rose, cinnamon, and in the base, amber, musk, sandalwood, oak moss, and patchouli. Since I'm so sensitive to these aldehydes, I have a hard time smelling what the flowers are in there, but lang lang. And it smells like honey to me. And so I really don't know that I'm smelling carnation, but normally I'm sensitive to, to carnation. And cinnamon, I can definitely see cinnamon because if you don't use cinnamon in like a high amount, it really gives like some body to the fragrance. And nutmeg is similar, except nutmeg is a little higher towards the top than uh, cinnamon is. So cinnamon is more of a base note, but it brings like a substance, a substance to the fragrance and gives it a more thick, rich, comforting aspect. I've been getting comfortable with this fragrance because I told you I have associations with like older teachers or something uh, wearing this, maybe people older than teachers even, people with authority over me wearing this type of thing. And back in the 90s, you know, I was a young woman, I was intimidated. So now I'm wearing it before bed because it's so warm and I like to wear things that are warm before bed. And I like wearing things similar to like, for instance, Arpege by Lanvin, one of that old fragrance. Uh, sometimes I like to wear that before bed, even though it doesn't last whatsoever. Yeah, that is the thing about that old fragrance. It just does not last. I, I demand more. I tried Gentleman um, by Givenchy, um, the original one from 1975 or 78. Time period, it's like a splash bottle. I tried that. That wasn't lasting either. When I want it to last, I want it to last all night. I want to, I want to smell what the dry down is in the morning. That's what I expect from a bedtime fragrance and I'm not giving up. So I like apparently these aldehydes, these ancient aldehydes before bed and patchouli and something with vanilla in it, but staying away from caramel. It's not one of my favorite notes. It's one of my least favorite notes, caramel. So yeah, this one reminds me of caramel in a lot of ways. There's no caramel in it but there's something caramelized happening with these aldehydes. And um, there's amber, and that's definitely contributing to how warm and, and nice this feels. I guess I like ambers before bed. Another one that I've been spraying before bed, hmm, it's like an amber, what is it? I'm trying to think, something extreme. Oh, 
well one actually is creation uh 2011 re-release of creation by ted lapidus released for women that is not most people even say this that it's not it does not seem like it's geared towards women but i've been loving that before bed that's got a very strong green note i believe it's from the cassis but i'm not completely sure yet back to white diamonds the uh perfumer carlos Benaim. he works at iff and his education is at iff and what other fragrances did he do okay he did something for a lab on fire hmm, one fragrance called liquid night that sounds progressive yeah he's had a long career white diamonds for elizabeth taylor can you imagine being the perfumer for elizabeth taylor's fragrance oh my gosh what did he do before elizabeth taylor's white diamonds he did stuff for Casharao, Calvin Klein. For Calvin Klein, he did Euphoria Spring Temptation. Carolina Herrera, uh, he did something from Coty, La Voce, Renee Fleming. Right, I just saw he did Pure Poison for uh, Christian Dior. He did Pure Poison. That's a beautiful fragrance. I mean, it's, you know, you can't say anything negative about it. He did a, a few for uh, Elizabeth Taylor, he did four. Violet Eyes, which I haven't gotten my nose on at all. It sounds lovely. Um, he did White Diamonds, White Diamonds Eau de Parfum as well, and White Diamonds Parfum. Also, for Ralph Lauren, he did Polo. He did a lot of the flankers. Wow, he did, he did so many fragrances. Tom Ford, Italian Cypress. Flower Bomb, Flower Bomb. Did he do Flower Bomb Nectar? I need to know. Yeah, he did Flower Bomb Nectar. That fragrance got me into my addiction with <laughs> Flower Bomb Nectar was a gift that was given to me. And then shortly thereafter, I developed an addiction to fragrances. For Frederick Mall, Carlos Benaim did three fragrances called Dawn and Eau de Magnolia and music for a while. Carlos Benaim also did Red Door for Elizabeth Arden. I'm going to do a separate video on this fragrance. I have now three bottles of this. This is the vintage one and originally when I first got it, I didn't like it at all. So I know why people dislike that fragrance, but I did take it back out two years later and realized I loved it. Regarding White Diamonds, the the notes that stand out the most to me are the aldehydes, the orange, and you know I love orange. If you haven't watched my other videos, you don't know, but I do love orange. Lang Lang, cinnamon, amber, oak moss, and musks. Those are the ones that stand out the most to me, but there are so many other florals in here that I don't specifically smell you know like i don't really smell the tuberose jasmine narcissus carnation italian orris fruit turkish rose lily neroli i don't smell those very much but they're in here you know those old vintage fragrances often have a ton of notes and they all blend together that was the style so this is a wonderful fragrance there's a reason people love it and it's inexpensive it's totally reasonable even now it's reasonable i highly recommend you get your nose on it if you like things that are mature thanks for watching and i will see you again later